So good morning, everyone. It's delightful to hear your voices, see your faces, and for those of you online, I'm just trusting that you have a face that I would be happy to see. <laughs> I'm sure I would. So um, there used to be a, a saying that if you were wanting to go out and find your fortune, they would say, go, what direction? Go west, young man, go west, right? So this morning we have become people that are going westward. And so uh, we're headed in a good direction to um, worship the Lord this morning. I'm glad that you're joining us. I'm glad you're here. And I pray that God has a blessing in your life. And we throw that word around way too loosely. Do not get how God is so good to us. But open up your eyeballs, open up your heart and your soul, and you'll begin to see the Lord is good. So thanks for being with us. We're going to begin our worship service. We're privileged and blessed to have this family coming and bringing us music. We'll worship the Lord together. Well, good morning, everybody. I'm thankful when there's no way in my life Jesus always came. Isn't that true? So I've got a question. How many of you remember Howard and Vestal Goodman from the Happy Goodman family? All the old people. I'm just kidding. I love this song. Hey, why don't you help us out? I heard them sing, he paid the price, and Jesus bore it all. I heard them sing, I'm coming home, and hear the master's call. Yes. 
to interrupt. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. Would you join me in our call to worship this morning? This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. Indeed, this is the gate to heaven, and we've already experienced some of it right now. We're so grateful you're here with us this morning. We're grateful you're online with us this morning. And for those of you who are watching later on in the week, we're grateful that you're with us as well. God bless you. We greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I have one brief announcement, and then we're going to uh, bless our mission team. Uh, we have... Uh, uh, JLK Grill Night at Mill and Meadows tomorrow night. Here comes the graphic for it. Tomorrow night, there's several people signed up. It's not too late to sign up and help. We need more help. All right. And the other thing I was told by the, uh, the JLK people is that we need plates, cups, and store-bought cookies. So if you can provide any of those plates, cups, and store-bought cookies, bring them to Mill and Meadows at 5 p.m. tomorrow, and we'll be very grateful uh, this is our way to reach out into our community. These are our folks right here, our neighbors right down the road. So I, I hope and pray that you can come be a part of this. We need people to pray. We need people to uh, serve. We need people to just uh, walk around and be friends with the folks that are there present. All right? That's what we need. That's all we need. And, and so we hope you'll come and, um, and be a part of that as well. I wanted to read something for you uh, very quickly. Um, this was sent to us uh, some time ago. If you are familiar, you know, we have our softball field out there in the back, and we have um, some young ladies who, who practice out here every week who come to our church. And I just want to read this to you. Um, 
This is from the coach of this team, and, and, and I want you to hear why we do what we do and why we open up our facilities to our local community. Listen to this. Uh, I was thinking that you might be interested in hearing some of the outcomes. We set up this team as a developmental opportunity for young girls. Travel softball tends to be very cruel. So here are some stories for you. Our composite GPA has improved from 3.18 to 3.64 since they started. We have volunteered with the Southwest Michigan Food Bank, the VA Medical Center, Habitat for Humanity, Girls on the Run, and Miracle League. All the girls that tried out for their high school teams made them. Seven of the nine made their varsity squads, and all of them start. One of our players was just awarded the medallion award, which goes to the five students in the Kalamazoo area math and science center who display the highest academic achievement and best community citizenship. Four of our girls have already been awarded their academic letters. Not all schools do this, and I'll bet it will be higher. And my personal favorite, and this is the one that touched my heart. We had a player that struggled in school, showed poor attitude at home, and low effort at practice. We met with her and her parents several times and set goals and standards. She moved from a CD average to all Bs. She cleaned up her attitude at home and starts for her varsity team. Mom told me the other day that her and her husband were struggling and separated. She told me that the reduced stress of parenting our player, the friendships they made with other parents, and the support our team extended has allowed them to fully reconcile not going to lie, I cried like a baby in the car after she told me. And all of this, and we've improved our win rate about 60% despite moving up to more competitive classifications each year. This is the reason I want to share all this, because we don't practice at church by accident. While our team is not specifically religious, and my family is Catholic, it is an outreach of the heart that you all are providing. I hope that by sharing this, you can all feel great that your warm reception and support of us has enabled us to make positive changes in our community. Dear friends, this is why we open up our facilities to the community. And now we have a most important moment. We're going to invite our mission team up. Come on up, guys. Yep, all of y'all. All y'all. For those of us who used to live in the South. All right, we have an incredible group of people that are going to the community of Chicago. We're working with an organization called Pacific Garden Missions, and we're going to be helping out local churches and reaching out to, to homeless communities and just really loving on people. And I'm incredibly honored and thankful that um, starting this Thursday through the following Thursday, so the 14th through the 21st, that we get to lead these, these amazing people and that they get to, to love on um, God's community and be an extension of us here at Pathfinder Church. So I would invite you to, to stand up and we're going to pray over our team together. Would you reach your arms out towards this team, please? Gracious Heavenly Father, you are an awesome God. And, for, and Father, you, you bring us this awesome team. And we're so grateful for their willingness to serve you in this way. So, Father, would you touch their hearts as they serve, and would you touch the hearts of those whom they serve? Father, help us to be a good representation of your Son, Jesus Christ, in the community in Chicago, and for that matter, Lord, for all across the world. So, Father, bless these folks. Be with them. Keep them strong. Guide them. Give them discernment and wisdom as they serve you in this capacity. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. And all God's people said... Amen. amen and amen. amen. Thank you all. Thank, Thank you. you for what you're going to be doing. God amen. bless you. Let's give him a hand, folks. All right, and the last thing that I want to, oh yes, children, you can go off to Children's Church. Thank you for reminding me. Last thing I, I just want to mention is that we will be taking up a love offering a little bit later in the service. This love offering is for our musicians this morning. All right, it is separate from our, our normal offering. You, your normal offering, you just leave out in the plate like you normally do every week out in the basket. But we're going to have a separate love offering for these folks. We'll pick that up a little bit later on in the service, all right? Are you all ready? Come on and bless us some more. Come on.
This may be a new song for you today, but we want you to stand to your feet and learn it and sing along with us when you do, okay? My feet are on the cross. Shut up. 
seated this morning. It is so wonderful to be with you all today. I tell you what, I tell you, can I introduce my family to you guys? Well, I'll start off with somebody who I've known for over 25 years. Somebody who will clean my house when told to. Somebody who will mow my grass when told to. Somebody who will change the oil in my car when told to. Would you welcome my wife, Kelly, everybody? <laughs> she can do it all, I'm telling you. Except Cook. Coming over, coming over here to tell you that. I felt a cold breeze come through the room when I said that. It was Christmas time, and I took the kids, and we were looking for the perfect gift for Kelly, you know. And we looked and looked all over the place. Finally found the right one. We brought it home. And then we had to find a place to hide it, you know, so she wouldn't find it. So we looked all over the house. And uh, after a while looking, you know, I, went, I heard one of our kids yell from another room and said, Hey, Dad, I found the perfect place. Let's put it in the oven. She'll never look there. Cute, honey. <laughs> Would you please make welcome the really, really bad teller of jokes. My husband, Scott, everyone, please give him a hand. It's a gift from God. <laughs> well, since he's sharing on me, I am going to share a story on him. We were singing in a church, and there was a little boy there who had worn his Captain America outfit. So he had the mask, everything on, and while we were singing, I could just kind of tell he was messing around with something in his seat. Afterwards, he came up to our table and he said, I made these for you. And they were Starburst candies that he'd been sitting there smushing and putting together little sailboats for us. <laughs> I said, ah, oh, thank you. He said, yeah, the all yellow one, that one's for you. The orange and yellow ones, that's for your dad and your brother. <laughs> I love that kid. It is not that funny, man. Just saying. I smacked that kid to the floor. Everybody, this is our son, Garrett. He is 25 years old, and we're so proud of him. He's dedicated his life to sharing the gospel. Yeah, give it up for Garrett. 
Kelly and I have four kids, and uh, Garrett's 25. We have a 22-year-old son. His name is Carson, and he's back in Indiana. That's where we're from, Indiana. And uh, he graduated Indiana State University this May. He's going to be a pilot, an airline pilot. Yeah, proud of him. He used to sing with us, but he hated it. He hated every minute. He's one of those guys that does not like to be in front of people. He likes to be in, behind the scenes, you know. And uh, I tell him, though, in your line of work as an airline pilot, you're going to be in front of people all day long. Yeah. Might as well jump on board. The jokes, aren't, they ain't getting better, okay? Uh, hey, come up, you guys. This is uh, our second batch. This is Peyton, and Peyton is uh, 14. Yeah, she's 14. And tell them what grade you're in, going in. Ninth grade, yeah. Good. Give it up for Peyton. Make her welcome if you would. This is Cade, everybody, and Cade um, is 13 years old. Why don't you tell them what grade you're going into? Eighth. Eighth grade. Yes. Give it up for Cade. It's a little early. Uh, I have to stop real quick, you guys, just tell you. Proud dad moment. Both of them came in first in their class in school last year. Yeah. They're homeschooled, so it doesn't actually count. Come on. All right, well, let's hear him sing one. What a happy time. Happy. Happy. Summer's off to me this year. Burns press us so. And the way is hard to see that we have to go. But we press along in faith to our home. Yeah. We used to share mics with them when they were little, you know. He came to me one day and he said, Dad, I've got to get my own mic. Your breath stinks. Yes. Guilty, everyone. 
sing it. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down. I will cling. I will cling to been held by the Savior, and I felt far from above, I've been down to the river, I hate the same.
Are you thankful you've been washed by the blood of the Lamb tonight, today? What a friend he is. There's a line in that song that says, all my yesterdays, gone. Isn't that a beautiful thing? I don't know anybody but Jesus who can do that for me today. If you're like me, you know, you're trying to overcome things in your life. And here's what I do. I go to God and I say, God, I can't do this on my own. I need you. I need your power. I need your strength. I can't do it. And I give it to him. And then I go pick it up and try to solve it on my own. Don't we do that? Jesus said, come to me, all ye who are weary and heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Rest from all that trying to make it to heaven on your own because it's only by grace through faith that we're saved. Rest from trying to overcome every day on your own because it's only by his power and his strength that all things are possible today. So I encourage you today, we're going to sing more songs, but don't leave this place without a relationship of trusting him with everything that you are. Not just coming to church and doing your part, you know, to try to make it in, but trusting him with everything you have. That's what he wants. Okay? Amen. In Christ alone will I glory, though I could pride myself. Just to know him 
today. Praise his name. Praise his name. You know, we are so honored to get to do what we do. We love what we do. We get to go to places and churches and see God move in amazing ways. And um, I remember one time we were, went to a little church, and uh, there was a lady there, and she sat through the concert. We did our thing, you know. And afterwards, um, I noticed a group of people around her praying for her, and we went and joined in. She said, I've been abused all my life. I got into an abusive marriage. And tonight I was going to kill myself. I was going to commit suicide. But I, for some reason I came tonight, and I don't want to do that anymore. God has just, you know, changed my heart. He's given me hope. And we're just so thankful to be a part of things like that. You know, it is amazing. And to be honest with you, we do those things because you give. We do those things because you give. Little churches call us. They say, would you come in and sing? And we're able to do that because you give. And so we just want to thank you today for what you do give. We appreciate it so very much from the bottom of our hearts. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. You know, I grew up in a little town called Tornado, West Virginia. Honest to God's truth, my mom lives in Hurricane, West Virginia, as we speak. Not a joke, not a joke. But back in Tornado, you know, I grew up on a little house on the hillside, and there was a little creek running by our house. Right beside our house was a little church. And uh, we were there every Sunday morning, every Sunday night, every Wednesday night, and sometimes in between. And I can remember uh, sitting out there just watching that piano player play her songs. I loved it so much, you know, it was so fun. And I thought, she was one of those honky-tonk country players, you know, I loved it. And so uh, I said, you know what, I'm going to try that one of these days. And so I have, I'm going to play one right now called Goodbye World Goodbye. <laughs>
as fun. Have you all had a great time so far this morning? Awesome. We've had a great time worshiping with you as well. Real quick, I want to tell you what we have back at our table. First of all, we'd just love to meet you all afterwards, shake your hand, talk to you and get to know you. But we do have stuff back there for you if you'd like to take something home with you. Uh, but that song we just sang is called Every Day God Will Make a Way. That is our brand new song. It is on Christian radio, Spotify, Apple Music, anywhere you listen to your music. But we do have a t-shirt back there that says Every Day God Will Make a Way on it. Uh, beautiful. And then we, of course, have some music. We've got a couple CDs, one called Jesus Can and another one called Love Has Won. Both of these have a lot of the music you've heard us sing this morning on there. And then we have a third CD called Tune My Heart To. Now this one is by Andrew Greer, who was kind enough to feature us on a song. And on this CD, there's a lot of other great people like Sayla, Point of Grace, Buddy Green, who co-wrote Mary Did You Know, and Anthony Evans. It is a beautiful CD. You'll be in tears listening to it. It's amazing. How many of you have a newer car and they kind of forgot to put the CD player in it? Yeah, a bunch of you. Well, we have the perfect thing for you. We have a flash drive that has five CDs on it. It's got Jesus Can and Love Has Won, so a lot of the music we sing today. And then if you liked uh, Great Is Thy Faithfulness that my dad played earlier, he's got a CD on there that has a lot of soft meditative music, a lot of your favorite hymns, a lot of pretty music by a not-so-pretty guy. Um, that CD is on there. We should have named it that. That would have been good. 
Um, and then there's also a Christmas CD and a fifth CD we no longer sell a physical copy of. So that's five CDs for $40, works perfect in your newer car or your computer. And if you don't know how to use it, ask a child or a grandchild and they'll teach you. <laughs> for the coffee drinkers, we have a giant coffee mug. It is bigger than Cracker Barrels, so you know it's a great mug. Um, you want to talk about the last one? Oh, sure. So we have a special friend, and he travels everywhere we go with us. His name is Wally, and his name is Wally... D. Rody, that's his one right there. Yeah. Wally D. Rody, Wally the Rody, right? So, as you can tell, he would make a perfect Rody. He helps us carry in the speakers and the keyboard. He just does a great job, I'm telling you. But we've written a children's book, and it's called The Adventures of Wally D. Rody, you guys. And uh, in the book, Wally travels all around with us, and um, he gets into funny situations in the book, but Wally learns about God's grace. Just like your little reader will. So if you have kids, grandkids, great-grandkids, some of you, you know who you are. Uh, come back and, uh, yeah, grab one of these books, $15, The Adventures of Wally D. Rody. I think Wally's going to be out at our table, too, if, if you'd like to meet Wally. He's going to be out there. Everybody say bye-bye, Wally. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you remember that old song? Uh, well, hey, before we do that, I want to tell you guys, we have in the back a... Uh, bundle of music, everything on our table. I feel like there are people here today who are looking for a fertile soil, right? A ministry you know that is going to make a kingdom impact. And if you are, we would love for you to partner with us. And if you do, for $100, we'll give you everything that Garrett just told you about. Everything for $100. That's $150 of music. You can have it front. And it comes in this nice, pretty little bag, too. So, uh, yeah, if you guys would like to partner with us, that's back there, too. So thank you so very much. All right, remember that old song, he's still working on me to make me what I think. This one's kind of like that. It's called He's Making Me.
<laughs> hey, I am so thankful. Jesus, they thought he was going to be the king of Jerusalem when he was born, right? And that life would be peace forevermore. But he chose to live a servant's life. And then he chose to die so that we could live. I'm so thankful he chose that path. A hill, a cross, two nail-scarred hands, a crown of thorns on his head, his body beaten, bruised, and torn, his blood the last to be shed. Mary stood among the crowd as she watched Isn't he faithful today? He's been faithful every step of the way in our lives. We've been singing now as Westward Road for about uh, seven and a half years now. Before that, I was a worship pastor for about 20 years in churches. And <laughs> I remember um, one day, you know, before we started Westward Road, I, Kelly came down with an earache. And, you know, it's an earache. She went on for a few days. Finally, she decided to go to the doctor and get it taken care of. So we went to the doctor. I remember going and um, 
The doctor started feeling around on her throat when we got there. And I thought, well, that is weird. She went in for an earache, and he's feeling around on her throat. Well, he said, you know what, I'm going to run some tests. And so he did, and he called back in a few days, and he said, I hate to tell you this, but you have thyroid cancer. And he said, you're going to have to have surgery, probably have to have radiation. And the dangerous part is the surgery is like literally against your vocal cords, and you might not sing again. You might not talk again. Well, that scared us. So we would go back to our church every Sunday, and everybody in the church would gather around Kelly up here in the front and pray over her. We went and got another opinion from another doctor, came back the same, cancer, surgery, radiation. I remember the day of surgery came around, and a bunch of us were waiting out in the waiting room there at the hospital, you know. And uh, the doctor came out, and I'll never forget what he said. He said, well, the surgery went great. He said, as a matter of fact, we got in there, there was no cancer whatsoever. We believe God healed Kelly that day. God was faithful. Things went our way. Sometimes things don't go our way. God is still faithful. And I want you to know if you're facing something today, you don't know how you're going to make it to the other side of that mountain. Or you're praying for somebody who is. Just keep on trusting God. I wish there was a magic pill we could all take and our problems would go away. But there's not. And it's easy for me to stand here right now and tell you this because I'm not going through it. But I have. I can tell you from experience. Trust God. Draw near to him. He will draw near to you. The word tells us that he is closest to us in the midst of our pain and our suffering. So draw near to him. And he's going to pull you up that mountain. Take you to the other side. And you're going to be stronger. There's a verse that says something like, don't try to get out of your suffering too soon. Because it's building perseverance. You'll be stronger. So keep drawing near to him. He will draw near to you. And he'll bring you to the other side and you'll be strong. Okay? There was a time when things didn't go our way, you know, and God was still faithful. Would you come and tell him? So when I was growing up, there was one thing and one thing only that I ever wanted to be, and that was a mother. So when Scott and I were about two years into our marriage, I was so excited to find out that we were expecting because I was going to get that one thing. But a little way through, we ended up losing that baby. And I was devastated because that was the one thing that I had always wanted. But during that time, God laid a song on my heart called, My Redeemer is Faithful and True. And the song says, as I look back on this road I've traveled, I see so many times that he carried me through. And if there's one thing I've learned in my life, it's that my Redeemer, he is faithful and he is true. And I just began to sing that song every day to myself. I began to pray that song into my life, that my Redeemer, he was faithful and true. And that song carried me through that difficult time. Six months later, we were expecting again, and this time with Garrett, and he is my constant reminder that my Redeemer is faithful and true. <laughs> you know, we decided a long time ago, we didn't want to just come and sing fun songs. We didn't want to just come places and meet great new people as much as we love it, you guys. But we wanted to make a difference with what we do, and so we've made it our mission to save the lives of little children. We do that because people like you come to a service or a concert, you hear our story, and you say, you know what, I want to get involved, I want to help out. It's only $39. And you might be thinking, how in the world can $39 save the life of a child? It's because they're living under a piece of tin with four poles holding it up. They're eating rice and beans. They're not going to Outback. They're not going to, you know, even McDonald's. $39. The legislator stood here and he said, I hate to break it to you all, but we are legalizing abortion. Some of you might run out here and start writing letters and emails to your congressmen, your senators, and maybe go pick it. You might have prayer meetings, and you should. There's a better way. But my question is, where's the church when those kids are born? See, we fight for them to be born, and we should. But where's the church when they are being thrown into the dumpsters or being dropped off at orphanages all alone in fire stations? Who's going to show those kids their love when they have no food to eat, right? No clean water to drink. I am. I am. $39. You might be thinking, he's going to ask me to give $39 for a year. I'm not. You might think, you know, I can't do that for six months. I'm not asking you to give six months. I'm asking you to give today. $39.
cash, check, or credit card to save the life of a child. Think about that. $39. I'm going to ask my family. Come up here, you guys. We've got these little cards, and it's got pictures of children on there. It's got uh, their story, where they're from. And you can, we're, I'm going to just count to three here in a minute and ask you if you'd like to help out. You'll raise your hands up high, and they'll bring one of these to you. But before we do that, Garrett told you about the CDs. I'll give you a free CD if you'll help us out today. That's kind of our gas money to get to the next place. But I can find gas money. I want to save kids' lives. I don't know how long I can do it, but I can do it today. $39 to save the life of a child. Here we go. One, two, three. Raise your hands up high if you'd like to help out, everybody. Raise them up high. They are short so they can see you. Yeah, raise them up. What you're going to do is take the envelope out of that card. You're going to fill it out. Make sure it gets filled out so the child gets in. Here's the thing. Once a child gets into this program, they can't be kicked out. So literally $39, you're getting them in. You're saving their life. And if you can't continue, somebody else is going to, to go uh, after you and fill in the space that you've taken. $39. Raise your hands up high, you guys, if you'd like to help out. Take that envelope out. Fill it out. That's how the child gets in. Make sure you do that. Bring it to our table at the end, and we will give you a free CD. Anybody before we move on? Don't want to take too long. Raise your hand up high if there's anybody else. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. What you'll do is you'll, uh, I already told you that. You'll take it back here. Yeah, shut up, Scott. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, thank you guys so much. I tell you what, we feel like Jesus is proud of you. You've been in his hands and his feet today. Thank you so much. If you feel the spirit leading you, we'll have more of those little packets at our table at the end. Thank you very much. Well, I think you might know this song, Victory in Jesus. If you do, sing along with us, okay?
those hands going. What seems impossible is not when you're leaning on Jesus. He can make a way where there seems to be no way. Search for him, you will find. He is still the only answer. There is no other way. Jesus can search for him. Y'all been blessed? Yes. All right. Their table, the merchandise table's out there. There's goodies out there. Come share with us. Those of you who are going to lunch with us, uh, we'll let you know when we're leaving, so hang around if you wouldn't mind. Would you receive this blessing? May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you all the days of your life, now and forevermore. Amen? and amen. God bless you all. Thank you for being here. Thank you for joining us. On